One time there was a debate between Rabbi Israel Misalant and his students. Now his students were Malachi Asharet, weren't regular people. Each one is Gdolado. So they're having a debate, it's like having Rabbi Akiva, the uh, you know, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Mirbalanes, <laughs> giants of generation, all having a debate. It's like there's like spiritual fire coming to Shemaim. So now they're having a debate. What's the debate? About Bitachon. Rabbi Tachon. Rabbi Sami Salat says, you are supposed to have 100% Bitachon for every big thing and every small thing. At Kedekach, to the extent where if you believe that something is going to happen right now, Hashem will make it happen. Chamin is Tommy Dim says, now you're taking it too far. Well, Hashem works for you. He says, no, no, no. It's not about Hashem works for you. Hashem it's not about Hashem works for you. It's if you believe that Hashem is watching everything and can do anything, mamash, you believe He can do everything? But now you say you believe, but you believe Bemet. He'll do it. Just because you believe in Him. And they had a debate back and forth. Do, do, do. Hey, is this proof, that proof, this proof, this proof. And he says, here, I'll prove it to you all right now. How? I believe I am going to get a gold watch today. The witnesses were all there, all thinking, oh, the rabbi took it a little too far. As soon as he's finished the sentence, as soon as he's finished, like a movie, like a movie, five soldiers, Russian soldiers, come inside, burge inside the colon, the Bet Midrash. People are scared what's happening, you know, usually Russian soldiers show up, it's not good news. Leader of them says, who's the biggest chacham here in Russian? Every points at the rabbi. Okay, sir, here. He takes out of his pocket a box. He hands it to him. Rabbi Salami Salant opens the box. Gold watch. Now, obviously, people will say, ooh, ooh, ooh. great, but where, what's the story behind it? Uh, can you please tell us where'd you get this watch? He's like, oh, he says, we were at war. My buddy, my best friend, died at the war. But before he died, before he got shot and died, he gave me this watch. He told me, listen, do, this is my dying wish. Give this watch to the biggest chacham in the yeshiva for Jewish people. That's my dying wish. And then he died. And I said, I'm going to deliver on a promise. And today, I'm delivering on a promise. The decree was written in Shemaim. Rabbi Israel Misalad decided he's going to be the vessel. The gold watch was already decided, however, when, when the guy died. A month before, a week before, a year before, whenever it happened. Meaning there was a golden watch going somewhere. When Rabbi Israel Misalant said, I'm going to get a watch because I believe that Akadosh Baruch Hu will give me the gold watch. Because I have bitachon and Hashem, I'm going to get it. He made himself the vessel. Not because he said it, because he believed it. When we're trying to do tshuva, Hashem wants to build us. He wants us to have bitachon like the Salam Yislavaka. He wants us to have bitachon like Rabbi Yisrael Yisrael. He wants us to have bitachon like Moshe Rabbeinu. He wants us to, have, to be the best we could possibly be. But you cannot be the best you could possibly be without overcoming obstacles. You can't. So what does he do? He brings us obstacles. Every time you pass, you go to the next level. Guess what? The next obstacle will be bigger than the last one. You pass this one, you get a bigger obstacle, pass the next one, and so on and so forth. But people complain. I don't understand. Ever since I did Shuva, all of a sudden I'm losing money. All of a sudden I'm losing this. All of a sudden I'm losing that. Why doesn't Hashem love me? What is it like? How do we explain this? Arabi again, Allah Shalom, explained it in a fantastic analogy. He says there was one time a woman, this woman, she had a few things going for her, but she was unmarried and she wanted a zivug. One day, 
to her surprise, Mr. Prince Charming shows up at her door and says, yes, I heard about you. And uh, I like everything about you. And I want to get married. Good looking, rich, famous, everything is good for him. I do. I just, she doesn't even know his name yet. I do. So, no, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I only have one condition. I need you to arrive at the wedding with no debt. No obligations. I just want you. She says, yeah, but I have stuff to do. He goes, okay, fine, no problem. I'll give you two months. Two months to get rid of all the stuff that you have, close all the doors, all the things that you have to do. And then two months from now, I want you to show up at the wedding. Okay, deal. So now she has to close off all her debts. She starts doing a financial statement. She sees, okay, I have all of this outstanding debt. I owe all this money. I have this amount of money. So she has to start calling people. And says, oh, listen. Uh, I owe you five dollars. Here you go. Close the account. I owe you ten dollars. Here you go. I owe you fifty dollars. Here you go. I owe you a hundred dollars. Here you go. Oh, I owe you five thousand. I don't have five thousand. I can settle for uh, five hundred. That's the most I can give you. No, are you crazy? You owe me five thousand. No, hey, listen, that's all I can do. Next guy, listen, I owe you fifty thousand. Can't pay you anything. Can't pay you. Sorry, just can't do it. I gotta close this business. We're closing down. Out of business sale. So she's trying to negotiate and the people are saying no, yes, no, yes. One month passes, two months pass, three months pass, four months pass, six months pass. Now the prince is waiting. He says, what's going on? So one of his people says, uh, listen, your highness, um, this uh, loving bride of yours, uh, she's still trying to close the doors because you told her the condition is that there's no debt, no problems. And she's still trying to close all the doors. And uh, it's simply not happening. Because why isn't it happening? Because she's trying to negotiate with everybody. Just give me the phone. Calls one of his sergeants. He goes, listen, get me all of the people she owes money to, to come to the castle right now. He brings everybody to the castle. He goes, listen, guys, why are you always fighting with her? This is what you do. All of you gather together. Instead of negotiating individually, all of you gather together class action also take everything she has she says your highness you're a genius genius now we're gonna have some power all together save money on legal costs save headache fine that's what they do all of a sudden she's trying to negotiate all of a sudden she doesn't get any phone calls everything becomes quiet she starts to get a little worried until one day somebody shows up at the door gives a 150 page document sign here here you go you've been served she sees class action lawsuit, foreclosure, disclosure, that closure, Shem Yachem. Our whole world collapses. She doesn't know what to do. She has no idea what's going on, what's happening. Who do I call? Oh, she, she calls the prince. Because I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm going to need at least another six to eight months, maybe a year before I go to this wedding. Why? He says. Because I have, a, I, have a, I have a class action lawsuit just arrived at my door. He goes, oh, great. He goes, what great? What do you mean great? He goes, oh, it's my idea. He goes, what do you mean it's your idea? He says, I told him to file a class action lawsuit against you. He says, you want to marry me? But at the same time, you're advising my enemies to smash down my door and file a class action lawsuit against me? He says, yeah. he says why'd you do that? because you were taking so long i want to marry you already let's finish with it give him everything and let's get married clean that's a kadosh baruch hu a kadosh baruch hu is telling you listen i've been waiting for your neshama to connect for 3300 years since mount sinai every generation you mess up and you have to come back again you mess up you come back again finally you're doing tshuva I've been waiting all this time. But he's saying, no, I'm not ready to do 100% chuba because my friends will make fun of me. My job will uh, fire me. My this will that, my this will that. Okay, you know what? No problem. Your job, they'll fire you. 
The wife, she'll divorce you. The money, you don't have it anymore. I'll clean you up all the problems. What? I can't wait to see you, my darling. I can't wait to see you. You see, Rabotai, if you have bitachon, that means you know the problems are coming from the prince. So it's not a problem. It's the solution. But if you don't have bitachon, you're struggling, suffering every moment of your life because you think that the prince hates you. You think the world hates you. You think you're unlucky. You think that everything is upside down. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe this, maybe that. You have constant questions. 